Hi, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. So it's been a while. I'm glad that you guys are still here. I went on a trip and then I got busy with life and stuff. So yeah, anyways, I'm back. And a few weeks ago, I asked you guys what video you'd like to see me do next and the option for the chill street photography one. So I decided to take you all in for an afternoon of chill street photography walking around Harvard Street last summer here in Toronto where I live. One thing that I like to do when the world around me just feels so overwhelmingly chaotic is to go out for a walk and unwind alone. But rather than just walking aimlessly and letting my anxiety just take over my head, I see to it that I focus on my path, observing details that may be mundane but at that moment are serendipitously delightful. This way, I ground myself in my surroundings and my thoughts wander over seeing something good in the day-to-day -day things, taking snapshots that I will later appreciate. A diary of where I've been, what I saw, and what I experienced. It's an act of seeing more than simply looking. Well, that was unintentionally sappy. Anyway, this photo walk was just me trying to get to my friend's new place in Toronto's Little Italy. I haven't explored the area where they moved and I was feeling a bit down so I thought I'd go for a walk and take some photos. And while I was at it, might as well look like a total dipshit with the Insta360 attached to my camera so I can document the photo walk just in case I decided to make something out of it in the future. And here's that something, I guess. The first roll that I shot was a roll of Lomography Lady Grey, which is an inexpensive 400 ISO black and white film. I rarely use black and white because I feel like color is an important attribute of how I see things, but I do shoot black and white every now and then. And that day, I just felt like switching things up and thought that the light was great for compositions that rely not just on physical forms, but also on shapes formed by shadows. As for my weapon of choice, I used my Minolta SR505 paired with the Minolta MD Rocor X 45mm f2.0. This was actually the first Minolta lens I had. I usually use my 51.4, but I thought about giving a lens that I haven't used in a while some much needed attention. Most of the photos I'll be showing in this video were taken from Harvard Street in downtown Toronto, but I started in Hoskin Avenue, which I'd say has some of the nicest old architectures in the city. I mean, just look at the Soldier's Tower at the University of Toronto's downtown campus. It's great. I feel like I'm in Harry Potter or something. Here, I observed that there were a lot of people riding their bikes in the street, so I thought I'd incorporate that into my shots along with the architecture in the area. Hoskin Avenue eventually becomes Harvard Street. Yeah, it's common for Toronto streets to just change names after an intersection even if the street didn't really change, which probably leads to a lot of confused folks who are still unfamiliar with the city. But look at this cool dude standing in good light, framed by the scaffolding. I actually wish I shot this with color film because look how colorful his shirt was. Would have been perfect against the bright orange construction tarps. And look at this freaking strode. At some point after the university buildings, you'll arrive at a portion of Harvard Street that looks a bit older and frankly a bit beaten. But it's not dingy or bad. It's like the patina on an old Leica M6. 
It gives the place more character and charm. And this is where I took my favorite shot of the role. I think I missed the timing a little bit, but I really like the overall composition of this photo. I like the angled shadows contrasting the vertical and horizontal lines on the building, and just the overall feel of it. Aside from the charming architecture aesthetics, Harvard Street is a mixed-use space, so it has lots of small businesses like local restaurants, cafes, and shops alongside living spaces. I find that this makes the area more lively and nice to live in compared to suburbia where you have to drive to get to the nearest Starbucks at a boring old parking lot, I mean strip mall. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting distracted here. Here's another time when I wished I was shooting in color because the way the light falls on that orange building was just mm, amazing. And sure, this still looks good in a black and white image given the textured shadows and all, but I really feel like I missed out on the colors here. What do you guys think? Okay, I'm gonna have to speed up some of this footage because I don't want this video to be too long. <laughs> but as you can see in this next shot, I just continued taking photos of people on their bikes with some interesting background or lighting. The street was also alive with people going about their daily lives, so I had plenty of other interesting subjects to take photos of when there aren't anybody on their bikes. I'm also quite satisfied taking photos of interesting building facades, but sometimes having a person in the scene just makes it a bit better in my opinion. Another thing I like when exploring new places is stumbling across some nice art installations such as this one by the Kaun artist that reminds us to see how beautiful we are. <laughs> and so I finished the role of Lady Grey 400. I've only shot this film stock a couple of times and it's consistently given me low contrast, unsharp images with creamy greys almost looking like they're from old newspaper prints. I honestly prefer black and white films that have more contrast and richer blacks like Ilford Delta 400 and Kodak Tri-X, but there's definitely a look to Lady Grey that's quintessential Lomography. Next, I decided to load my camera with a roll of Lomography Color Negative 800, mostly because I've been itching to shoot color for most of the time during the photo walk, and the almost golden hour light was just bathing everything in this amazing warm glow. So I thought, yeah, I need to put some color in. As soon as I loaded my camera with colored film, I switched to looking for bright pops of colors as part of my composition. I think shooting black and white is actually harder than shooting in color because you have to be able to translate what will look light and dark, focusing on values, whereas most of the time what you see is what you get when shooting in color. The challenge really is ensuring that the colors that appear in your image make sense and are intentional. So you have to train your eye to see color harmony or lack thereof. This is probably easier to do if you have control like during a studio photo shoot, but when you're just out and about documenting life, you're stuck with what the scene gives you and you have to work with it. But it's fun when you get images like this one where the color compositions just works. The warm red-orange tones of the brick wall contrasting with the blue sky reflected on the windows, the greens muted by the shadow of the building so they don't make the photo any busier, and the orange and red tones on the person extending the reds into the darker side of the image to balance it all out. I quite like this image. And depending on how you do street photography, whether you're a hunter or a fisher, you can patiently wait at a spot and fish for these moments. But let's face it, most of the time you'll end up with some garbage photo. <laughs> I'm more of a slow shooter so this isn't new to me but I had limited time during this photo walk because I actually had to get to my friend's place at some point. <laughs> I just tried to predict where people will be at within a few minutes and try to shoot that. Some actions are quite easy to predict like actions that follow a straight path like people walking or biking. When I see an oncoming person into a scene, I just position myself and hit the shutter once they enter the frame. 
Sometimes they can change directions so you miss the shot, but other times they change directions and you get lucky like this shot here. I love how the person on the bike was wearing orange. It really worked. It's already 4am as I'm recording this, and I'm just rambling now. My approach to street photography is to just be more attentive and observant to my surroundings. Taking interest and then being deliberate, asking myself why before taking a photo. But sometimes, it's also an exercise in just letting go and just simply capturing what you feel like capturing. Not wondering whether if it's a good photo or not, but just relying on the fact that at that moment, you wanted to take a photo of something. And I think there's beauty in that. I like seeing candid photos of seemingly random things because that just means that someone decided that something was worth taking a photo of. And I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm romanticizing things too much. I actually didn't get to finish this roll of Lomo 800 that day, though I did took some photos of my friends while I was at their new place. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more if you haven't yet. I'll see you all again in the next one. Cheers.